Hello again, I'm Kenneth Opal, and today I'm going to be reading Peg and the Yeti with illustrations by the amazing Barbara Reed, who makes her illustrations out of plasticine. And I will do my best to show you each and every one of these illustrations as I read. So this is actually a companion book to Peg and the Whale, which I believe you've already heard. Peg and the Yeti. Peg was born upon the bright blue sea. Her home was her parents' fishing boat, and by the time she was eight, she'd caught pretty much every fish that swam. She caught a whale once, but she let it go, because it turns out a whale is not a fish. Now, this is where Peg lives, on her parents' fantastic fishing boat. She's got a bunk. It's pretty cozy. You see the water splashing outside the porthole. It's her fishing rod. You see some pictures of the whale. But Peg was putting all this fishing business behind her now. She wanted big, she wanted better, she wanted best. She figured she'd spent enough time sloshing around at the bottom of the world. Now she wanted to see the top. She wanted to climb the world's tallest mountain. She'd heard the view was quite something. So Peg packed up her fishing rod and said goodbye to her mother and father. There she is saying goodbye. She traveled by stagecoach and steamer, rickshaw and water buffalo, and in no time at all, she was at the base of Mount Everest. So here she is, all her modes of transportation there. Rickshaw, water buffalo, steamship. Mount Everest stuck right up through the clouds and kept going on the other side. Doesn't look so tall to me, Peg said, but if that's the best there is, I'll just have to put up with it. There you go. You see Mount Everest is pretty tall. It goes right off the screen. Pig is not impressed. Pig got going. After an hour or two, she passed a team of other climbers. What do you think you're doing, lass? They called after her. I'm climbing the world's tallest mountain, said Pig. But, but, but you've got no gear, they exclaimed. You'll need clamps and cleats and cables. You'll need poles and picks and pulleys. There's windstorms up there avalanches and they say there's a monster at the top the yeti well i should hope so said peg i've been wanting to see a yeti and up she went so there's all the climbers trying to warn her and peg does not look at all perturbed peg scaled precipices she skated glaciers and crossed chasms on icicle ladders the air moaned the mountain groaned, and Peg's breath froze solid and clattered to the ground. I suppose I better put my mitts on, she said. It's getting a touch chilly. Well, a wind came howling down on Peg and tried to blow her halfway to China. Peg was delighted. She rigged herself a sail from her tent and went tacking on up the mountain. There she goes. Woo! She's pretty good at this stuff. She's very resourceful, our Peg. Well, night came on, and Peg decided she needed to find a place to spend the night. She sat down on a boulder. It was quite soft. It was quite warm. Then she realized she was sitting on the Yeti. Poor fellow seems to be having trouble waking up, said Peg. She lifted a paw, spotted an ear, and shouted, Hey there, Yeti! Wake up! Well, the Yeti woke up. He stood up big as an iceberg and gave a roar that blasted Peg right out of the cave and down the hill. Peg dusted herself off. There she is. Well, the Yeti still seemed a bit out of sorts. He roared again, jumped up and down, banged his fists against the mountain, and started an avalanche that came plunging down towards Peg like a tidal wave. Well, Peg got busy and built herself an igloo. She was nice and cozy inside when the snow hit. That does look pretty cozy, I have to say. She's got everything figured out. Peg made tea, she ate an apple, she nibbled some salted cod and crunched some pork scrunchions. Then she wrapped herself up in her blanket and went to sleep. The next morning, Peg thought she'd better be moving along. There was only one path up the mountain though, and that grumpy old yeti was blocking her way, so Peg figured she'd tunnel right past underneath him. After a few hours, 
Peg popped her head out to see where she was. Well, it turned out she was right back inside the Yeti's cave. The Yeti yanked her up and sniffed her. Yeti, you look a little peckish, Peg said. What you need is a good square meal. She reached into her backpack and offered the Yeti an apple. The Yeti pulverized it in his paw. Peg offered him some salted cod. The Yeti growled. Next, Peg offered him a pork scrunchion. The Yeti sniffed it. The Yeti licked it. The Yeti ate it. He purred and put out his paw for another. It was a good thing Peg had brought plenty. You can see she's just chucking those pork scrunchions into the Yeti's mouth. It seems to do the trick. Now, Peg reckoned she'd better get going while she and the Yeti were still on friendly terms. But the Yeti followed her. Go on, Yeti, Peg said. I've got a mountain to climb. Shoo now. Shoo. But the Yeti would not shoo. He would not go away. He patted her on the shoulder with his big hairy paw. He wanted more scrunchions. Peg had never met a Yeti so keen on pork scrunchions. Well, up Peg went towards the clouds. But when she got there, they were frozen solid. She started chipping away with an icicle. The Yeti covered Peg's ears with his paws and gave a roar so loud he shattered the clouds into snowflakes. And there, beyond the clouds, was the peak. There you can see the Yeti and Peg, whoa, shattering those clouds. The Yeti hefted Peg onto his shoulders. He was a bit shaggy and smelly, but Peg supposed she was a bit shaggy and smelly by now, too. In no time at all, they were at the top. And there's Peg getting a nice piggyback ride up the mountain with the Yeti. But it wasn't quite the top of the mountain. There was one last peak, a needle of sheer ice high as a lighthouse. Well, Peg wasn't putting up with that. She got out her fishing rod. She swung that rod back over her shoulder and cast with all her might. The line played out higher and higher, and the hook sank into the icy peak. Peg reeled herself up and stood looking over the top of the world. The view was fine. Peg felt mighty pleased with herself. She'd wanted to climb the world's tallest mountain, and here she'd gone and done it, with a little help from the Yeti. There she is, top of Mount Everest. Look at all the stuff you can see on the world. You can see the CN Tower, Statue of Liberty. Well, after a few minutes, Peg reckoned it was time to be heading down. But walking seemed just a tad boring now. So Peg got to work. She carved herself a gondola out of ice, started a fire, and filled up her tent like a hot air balloon. Goodbye, Yeti, she said. She dumped the last of the scrunchions into his big hairy paw. I'm sorry for waking you up, and thanks for your help. There's Peg trying to get rid of that Yeti. The Yeti climbed aboard with her. Go on, Yeti, Peg said. Shoo now, shoo. But the Yeti would not shoo. He wanted to come too. You're too heavy, Yeti, Peg said. We'll go nowhere like this. The Yeti opened her backpack and dumped out the rest of the salted cod. That made all the difference. Slowly the balloon rose up into the air. There they go. They floated down through the night sky, the stars close enough to pluck right out of the sky. It was some cold, but Peg and the Yeti curled up together to keep warm. I think that's my favorite picture in the whole book. The next morning, Peg spotted the other climbers on the mountain. Forget the gear! Peg cried out to them. Get a Yeti! There they are, coming down. You see those other climbers? They don't look like they're doing too well, do they? They really do need a Yeti of their own. They glided out over the ocean, and Peg saw a speck on the horizon. Wouldn't you know it? Her mother and father's fishing boat. Peg landed the balloon on deck. Peg, we were a bit worried we'd never see you again, her mother said. Well, she said, I saw the top of the world. And how was that? Her father asked. It was quite high, Peg said. The view was fine. I see you've brought the Yeti with you, her mother said. He likes the pork scrunchions, Peg explained. Oh, very good then, said her father. Look at this. The Yeti's so heavy, he's making the boat kind of list over. And there's Peg greeting her mom and dad. Dad looks a little bit shell-shocked. 
Well, that Yeti, he took to the sea like nothing else. And by the time they reached harbor, he knew how to pull lines, haul sheets, and gut fish along with the best of them. He decided to stay on fishing. He does look like he fits right in. He's even wearing like a gloves and a toque. But Peg was restless. She was pushing nine after all, and she figured it was high time she made something of her life. After all, she wanted big. She wanted better. She wanted best. Look at her there. Already looking away somewhere on her binoculars. And it turns out she'd already set her sights on something new. Now, I don't know where Peg's going, but I think she's probably on her way to another adventure. So that is Peg and the Yeti with illustrations by Barbara Reed. I hope you enjoyed it.